on many people and draws them closer to its core. A young girl tormented by increasing doubts and uncertainties. A man wavering between the opposite poles of instinct and Morning, fact. Maggie. Well, hello, Mr. Carter. Well, how's the police force today? Its feet hurt. <laughs> <laughs> well, what can I do for you? We got a lunch special. It's lobster roll, coleslaw, no fried potatoes. No sale, Maggie. I'm looking for Burke Devlin. You haven't seen him, have you? Why? Well, I haven't seen him since he came to town. I'd like to say hello, that's all. Did you try his hotel room? He's not there. You haven't seen him, have you, Maggie? Well, a couple of hours ago, not since. Did he say where he was going? Nope. Hmm. Mr. Carter, do you always go around chasing people just to say hello? If he comes in, Maggie, tell him I'm looking for him, all right? I'll be in the hotel lobby. Mr. Carter, would this have anything to do with that automobile accident? I'll be in the lobby. Okay, Joe, I'll hold you to it. I'll order for you. The medium. Right. See you soon. Oh, hello, Maggie. Hi. See that table over there? You mean the one that shows where you spend all your money? <laughs> uh-huh. I want two hamburgers, medium, two coffees. Hey, you eating for two these days? <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> you I don't need. Say, Carolyn, more jokes. <laughs> no, I wanted to ask you something. Look, who are you meeting here? Is it Burke Devlin? Where'd you get that idea? Well, I know you were with him last night. Doesn't everybody in this town know everything I do? Well, my dad told me. But the constable was here just a while ago. He's looking for Bert. Oh. Well, I don't know what it's about, but I... I know what it's about, Maggie. Uh, remember, medium on the hamburgers. Carolyn, I... Maggie, what would you want me to do? Tell Bert to run? What are you so interested in him for, anyway? I didn't know you knew him that well. Well... I don't know. It's just... Well, it's my father. He lost me. Well, it doesn't matter. Uh, no, wait a minute. What's the connection between your father and Burke? Well, he used to pose for my pop when he was a kid. You know, before he went to prison. And... Well, as a matter of fact, Burke just asked my pop to do a portrait of him. Oh? Well, uh, he's not meeting me, but Joe Haskell is, and he doesn't have much time for lunch. Carolyn, in the row between your uncle and Burke, was my dad's name ever mentioned? Why should it be? Well, there's really no reason. I was just wondering. Well, here I am. Where's my lunch? Uh, Hi, honey. Hi. Come on, let's get the show on the road, Maggie. I've got exactly 45 minutes. Oh, it's my fault, Joe. I was gabbing. Coming right up. What was all the important talk about? Bert. Well, there you are. <laughs> Two hamburgers medium. Took a while, but it's worth waiting for. Thanks, man. Okay, now tell me, when did your uncle decide to call the police? This morning. I am hungry. You think Devlin was responsible for the accident? Look, Joe, do me a favor. Let's not talk about it. I'm sick and tired of the whole thing. Including Devlin? Especially Devlin. Good. Well, maybe you'll talk about us. I was looking at boats this morning. <laughs> well, of course you were. You work for the fishing fleet. <laughs> uh, not your mother's boat, idiot. A boat. I got up at 6 o'clock. I went down to the yard. Carolyn, there's a honey there. About 20 years old, but in, in great shape. I well, need some work, but... Well, it's just what I've been looking for. Can you afford it? That's the point. I may be able to afford it in just a couple of months. Oh, 
Well, I thought you said it would take at least another year to get enough money for the down payment. Maybe it can happen sooner. There's another fellow down at the plant, Jerry Gers. I, I don't think you know him. Anyway, Jerry's got the same idea I do, to get his own boat and be his own boss. What about him? Well, Jerry and I got to talking, and the thing is this. If we go in on this together, if we pool our money, we'll be able to get a boat in a couple of months. Well, that sounds marvelous. If you can trust him. Oh, Jerry's a great guy. You like him. He's a lot like me. There's only one difference. He married his girl. Now, look, Joe... Okay, okay, I know. You don't want to talk about getting married. Oh, Joe, I can't even think about it. Especially now, with all that fuss going on up at the house. Well, that's between your uncle and Devlin. Now, what's, what's that got to do with you? Joe, I've asked you not to pressure me. Please don't. Yeah, I'm getting a little fed up with it myself. Bert, did you come to the hotel? Oh, hi, Maggie. How about fixing me a ham and cheese and a container of coffee, black to go, hmm? Well, the constable was looking for you. That's so, huh? Well, probably wanted to sell me a couple of tickets to the bazaar. Well, I don't think that was it, because he's... Maggie, let's have an agreement, huh? You stick to fixing my sandwich, and I'll take care of my life of crime, all right? Butter and uh, mustard, no less. Come on, young man. In you go. Go on, march. You know, you were lucky you weren't picked up for vagrancy. I didn't do anything. Well, how long were you hanging around out in that hotel lobby? I was just sitting there. <laughs> well, wouldn't it be better to sit in here where you can have a Sunday at the same time? I don't want anything. Oh, of course you do. Now, you get up on one of these stools while I go back there and see what I can cook up. David Collins, aren't you? Yes. Well, your dad comes in here for coffee quite often. Do you know that? No. Well, do you want nuts and whipped cream on it, too? I don't care. <laughs> well, I wish all my customers were like you. You know, as a matter of fact, I was hoping your father would be coming in tonight. Kind of anxious to talk to him. Do you know where he is? At the office, I guess. Well, don't you know? I told you. At the office. Oh. Well, how'd you get into town, anyway? With my father. Well, will he know where to find you? Uh-huh. Say, do you think I could work the fountain sometime? <laughs> sure, David. Say, when do you think your father will be coming in for you? Oh, uh... Pretty soon. <laughs> he is coming, isn't he? I, I told you. You sure did. Okay. But don't gobble it. I have to go make a phone call and tell my father where I am. Wow, how does it taste? You say, it's pretty good with whipped cream. <laughs> you bet it is. Would you like another one? No, thanks. I better be going. <laughs> Say, David, how would you like to try making one yourself? Could I? <laughs> sure. You go right around that counter, and I'll give you a full set of instructions. Looking for someone? <laughs> no. Only a customer. You know, it's getting pretty lonely in here. Oh, now let me show you how to use that ice cream I know scoop. how. Okay, go right ahead. Oh, very good. Say, David, you want to know something funny? The hotel clerk just told me that you were trying to get into Burke Devlin's room. That's not true. The door was open. I was just looking. Any particular reason? Hey, where are you going? I don't 
want the Sunday. Oh, David, I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to be nosy. I just wanted to make conversation. I think I'll go back to the lobby. David, you know, it is getting pretty lonely in here, and that Sunday is going to go to waste. Say, why don't you go back there and make another Sunday for me, and then you and I will have a party. I'll tell you what. You can even put hot fudge on it. Is that a deal? Okay. Well, I have a few other things to do besides chasing all over town after my son. Where is he? He was behind the counter. Oh, he was right here making this Sunday. Well, he couldn't have gotten out those doors that fast. Well, he was here just a minute ago, believe me. Well? He's not in the lobby and nobody saw him go through. I don't understand it. He just disappeared so quickly. Spells and incantations, Maggie. If he does rematerialize, do me a favor. Don't call me again. Well, how will he get home? Well, he found his own way into town, didn't he? I'm sure he can solve that problem, too. It's dark now. Well, all right. If he does show up, Try checking me at the office, but tell him to warn, warn himself that he's in for a good, solid lecture. Mr. Collins. Well, what now? Did you know that David tried to get into Burke Devlin's room? No. Well, I asked him why. He said he was just curious. Curious about what? He didn't say. Oh, Maggie, if you do see David, the minute you see him, get a hold of him and, and call me. Mr. Collins, I'm curious about something, too. My father. What about your father? Well, I've wanted to talk to you about it ever since... I... He's been very upset lately, and I'm worried about him. Upset about what? Well, I don't know, but I thought maybe you could tell me. Why me? Well, I'm not sure, but... Well, ever since that night that Burke came back to town and you came in here looking for Pop, well, he's been frightened. I want to know why. How should I know? Because I'm sure it has something to do with you and Burke. I mean, even when Burke came to the house, Pop was so jittery that I couldn't even... Burke came to see your father? Well, yes, a couple of times. Were you there? Yes. What did they talk about? Well, I don't know. Pop was just acting so strangely. Did they talk about me? Then he is involved. But he's involved in nothing. Well, then why are you so worried about their conversation? Oh, I'm not, I'm not worried, Maggie. I'm just curious, like you are. I mean, doesn't it seem strange that a man comes back to Collinsport after ten years and then all of a sudden runs right over to see your father? No, that doesn't seem strange at all. Burke used to pose for my pop. Oh, that's what they were discussing, your, your father's latest paintings. Oh, partly. As a matter of fact, pop's going to do a portrait of Burke. What do you think of that, Roger? I'm going to be preserved in oils. Maggie, do you have any of that lobster roll left in the kitchen? Oh, I'm not breaking up the great romance, am I? No, we were just talking about Pop. Oh, are you a fan of his? No, but you seem to be. Maggie, would you uh, see about the lobster roll, please? Are you sure it was David Collins? Look, I had him in here with me for 15 minutes before he disappeared. Of course, that's who it was. Yeah, when they told me a kid had sneaked into my room, I never dreamed. Did they, did they know what he was looking for? Oh, you know kids. The chambermaid left the door open and he decided to look around. Just curious, I guess. Maggie, when it comes to that family, nobody's just curious. Not where I'm concerned. Maggie, uh, sit down, will you? I have to get back to work. Oh, come on. There's no customers around. Keep me company. Roger Collins was a little upset when you 
You told him I'd been to see your father, wasn't he? Yes, he seemed to be. Maggie, this might be important. Did Collins and your father see anything of each other while I was away? No, not at all until... I... Until when? Maggie, you know I'm very fond of your father. I wouldn't do a thing in this world to hurt him. Well, that night that you came back to town, Roger Collins came in here looking for Pop, and he seemed pretty anxious to find him. Now, what's happening, Burke? What is it? And before that night, they weren't seen with each, with each other at all, right? Well, I told you. The last time I remember seeing him at the house, I was just a kid. Just about ten years ago, hmm? I think so. It was just about the time of your trial. That's right. Burke, what's happening? I don't know. Yet. What time is it, Pop? I wouldn't know. Ooh, it's a quarter after one. Don't you think you ought to hit the sack? No. <laughs> what are you doing, Pop? Plugging for a non-sleep long distance record? Go back to sleep, Maggie. Leave me alone. It's exactly what I intend to do. As soon as I satisfy my inherited curiosity. Who called? Nobody. The phone rang, didn't it? That's what woke me. It, uh, it's the wrong number. <laughs> Try again. I heard you talking to somebody. I was talking to our friendly local bookmaker, okay? <laughs> Satisfied? <laughs> Go back to sleep, darling. You're getting those fatigue lines that a pretty little girl like you shouldn't have. Oh, they run in the family, Pop. <laughs> and they're not fatigued. It's worry. You think you know everything, don't you? Oh, no, not everything. But I do know you. I know you're a wonderful, marvelous human being. And I hate to see you torn apart the way you are. Then listen to this marvelous, wonderful human being. Go back to sleep. <laughs> How about you? I'll go to bed soon. I promise. I, uh, there's just something that I have to do. Another call to your bookmaker? Well, let's say I'd like to uh, keep the world from falling apart sooner than it has to. Good night, sweetheart. And don't worry. Tell me to stop breathing while you're at it. Good night, Pop. Got there, Pop. Maggie, I, I thought you went back to bed. <laughs> you know how it is. I tried, no luck. Thought I'd fix myself a cup of tea. What is that, a letter? Maggie, you are the nosiest creature on the face of this earth. Yes, it's a letter. I wrote it, and uh, it's private. Now, if you're going to make some tea, the door is right in there to the kitchen. You are a fund of information.
Well, kettle's on. Who are you writing to, Pop? Your friendly neighborhood bookmaker? See for yourself. It's me. This is for me? That's right. But you said it was personal and private. That's right. Well, that doesn't make any sense. You don't have to write me letters. You can talk to me anytime you want about anything. Maggie. Maggie, I, I don't want you opening that letter. Not now. I just want you to put it in a safe place. Keep it there. Don't open it. Don't show it to anybody. Just keep it. Well, I don't understand. Well, don't ask any questions, Maggie. Just promise you'll do as I ask. How can I promise when I don't know what it's... Because I ask you to. Believe me, darling. The one thing I hope is that you'll never have to open that envelope. That you'll never have to learn that... Learn what? The, the kettle's boiling. Pop, what did you write in this? What's in it? Maggie, will you turn that kettle off? I want you to promise me that you will never open it. Unless you hear that something happened to me. What do you expect could happen to you? Oh, my uh, friendly bookmaker may want his pound of flesh. Don't joke with me. Yeah. This has something to do with Collinwood, doesn't it? Just keep the letter, Maggie. That's all I ask. I wish that place would burn to the ground. That wouldn't do any good. Wouldn't solve any problems. Ghosts of the past don't live in a home. They live inside each man. They fight for his soul. They twist it into something unrecognizable. Don't talk to me about spooks. No ghost could make you that afraid for your life. You don't know anything about it. Go get your tea, dear. No sobbing ghost could have made you write a letter. I'm going to bed. was Roger Collins. I know. Ghosts. 